Hello and welcome to Unity of Salem's online Sunday service. I'm Reverend Patty and it is truly my honor and joy to welcome you here today. Shall we begin with prayer? Mother, Father, God, as we come together in this moment, we breathe into the space of the one heart, knowing that there is no sense of distance, that wherever we are, God is, and we are truly one. And we are grateful for this opportunity to come together in spiritual community. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. Hello, my name is Alan, and I'm your platform assistant today, and I have a few announcements to share with you. Join us immediately after service today for Coffee Talk with Reverend Patty. The link is in our weekly email, pinned to the announcement on our Facebook group, and will be posted in the Facebook event this morning at the end of service. On Thursday at noon, we have a meditation time using the same Zoom link as Coffee Talk. Thank you to everyone who participated in Saturday's Shine Our Light service. It was great fun. If you missed it, you can still watch it on either Unity of Salem's Facebook page or YouTube channel. Our Back to School Drive has been extended into Tuesday, September 1. The office will be open from 10 to 4, Monday and Tuesday, if you'd like to drop off supplies. Thank you to all who have already participated, and we are more than halfway to filling our barrel. We now join together in affirming the Unity of Salem mission statement. Unity of Salem nurtures spiritual growth in an inclusive, loving community. In our vision statement, Centered in spirit, we create a world of unlimited peace, love, and joy. And our core values are inclusiveness, spirit-led, compassion, love, joy, and integrity. I now invite Jim up for the daily word. And... The daily word is faith. I am blessed with a rightly directed faith. I have faith. That is never in question. What may be in question, however, is where that faith is placed. Words of doubt, fear, or worry signify a negative faith and are the opposite of positive, hopeful expectation. I catch myself and refocus my energy into affirmative, constructive thinking. I center myself and remember that with God all things are possible. When I notice improved circumstances, my faith continues to build. But even when I do not see evidence, I still believe. If I am tempted to doubt, I resolve to keep the faith. I keep my mind open to possibility thinking and envision all good things. I believe in the love, the activity, and the presence of God in all situations. I am continually blessed with rightly directed faith. Jesus said to him, if you are able, all things can be done for the one who believes. Mark 9.23 I can see 
For the past few weeks, we have been working our way through the spiritual tools in practice in this booklet that was issued by Unity, and it has been an enjoyable journey. Today, we're going to close that journey by looking at an expansive vision, at truly having that vision that will move us into lives almost beyond anything we might imagine. And I got to tell you, this is the biggest of them all. This encompasses everything else that we have talked about in this booklet. It's the practice that makes all of the others happen. It is how we create the world in which we live. And we can't avoid 
doing it. It's a natural process of being human, of being in this world. And today is about realizing that we have the choice of what we vision, that we get to choose to create an expansive vision that lifts us to a new vibration, to a new reality. So let's just start with talking about what the booklet says visioning is. Visioning is a mental picturing process in which we allow ourselves to hear, feel, and imagine a plan for our life or a particular area of our life. Visioning allows us to get clarity and guidance regarding the subject or topic we are imagining. So it is something that we're already doing. The question is, are we using it to create in our lives or are we using it to undo our lives or undo the vision that we really want to see, to limit ourselves in some way? And what I mean by that is when you got up this morning, did you imagine the absolutely wonderful day that you were going to have? Or did you maybe think about, oh, I don't really want to do this. Or, oh my gosh, I have this coming up today. Each one is a choice. And they make a difference in the day that we experience. And as I knew I was going to ask that question this morning, I was watching my thoughts and realizing that as I put my eyeliner on, I wasn't choosing the vision that I wanted to create. Now, yes, guys, I'm going to talk about eyeliner for just a second. But I went out this past week and bought some new eyeliner. And as I was opening it up and putting it on, the story that I was telling in my head is this is not the one I wanted. They were out of the one that I had intended to purchase. And I had this whole story going on about how this wasn't going to be the same. It wasn't going to work. It was going to be difficult to put on. And I had to stop. I had to stop and breathe and say, I can rewrite that. I can choose to love this new eyeliner and love that they had it available. And guess what? It actually is much better than the one that I was going to purchase. When we are open to the possibilities, the universe has our backs. The universe is creating the world that we want to create. And it's doing it through our visioning. It's doing it through what we are holding in our mind. And a I am not talking about just when we are doing vision boards or consciously moving our energy in a direction. It is doing it all the time. All the time. <sighs> yeah, breathe that in. We use vision boards usually at the beginning of the year and how we want to create our year or when we want to create something new in our lives. What if we used the, what we were holding in our mind on a daily basis just like we use our vision boards? What if we chose what images we wanted to focus on and what we wanted our lives to look like? What if we chose an expansive vision? How would we do that? Well, the booklet has one particular path that we might want to start with, and it's five steps for how you can change your vision or how you can hold a vision consciously in your life. And the first step is focus on what you'd like to experience or create in your life. Sounds simple. Focus your energy on that which you want to create. And yet most of the time, have you ever noticed that we focus on what we don't want to create and put our energy towards creating that vibration? Let's consider changing that and asking ourselves these questions. What do I want? What, should, what could I love? What would I love if I was moving in the direction of what I wanted? And then allow yourself to think big, to think expanded, to think beyond you know, this limited possibilities, to truly think 
in the ways that God might be thinking, because God has a big vision for your life. The second step, ask yourself, how will having or doing this make me feel? That feeling nature is a vital part of visioning. It's through our feeling nature that we align ourselves with a new vibration, that we align ourselves energetically with that which we want to create in the world. We have to allow ourselves to feel it for us to expand into the new possibility. And the third step is get comfortable with it. Allow yourself to, to expand your, comfort, your comfortability zone and truly own the new possibility. See yourself in the vision, mind, body, spirit. Just truly get comfortable with being there. And the way to do that is to close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and see yourself there. Now, some of us don't necessarily see images when we do that. We see colors. We feel feelings. However that works for you, imagine yourself being in the vision and get comfortable with how that feels, with what it looks like. And then move into the fourth step. If random thoughts start wandering in, sweep them away. You know, that monkey mind can try to get in the way when we're trying to create something new. We need to be focused on listening and just sweeping that away, saying, I hear you, and this is what I want to be focused on right now. And the way to do that is to return your thoughts, maybe to the breath, and start again at that third step. And every time that you feel distracted, start again at that third step until you can truly feel yourself in the vision. And then as always, the fifth step is to give thanks, to be in that attitude of gratitude. And when we call on the, the genuine feeling of gratitude for whatever we might be grateful for or whatever we want to come our way, the energy we are sending out is setting into motion that which we want to achieve. It's setting into the chain of events that will lead us down the new path, that will guide us in our thoughts, our words, our actions, and create the new possibility. So that's the basics of visioning. Here's the part that I want to talk about of that. Are you willing to receive? If not, it will get in your way. And I got to tell you, there's, we had this um, class, we're working on a book, Our Way Through the Abundance Project. And we had a conversation this past week about the law of circulation and the three um, cycles, uh, the three steps that we go through in the cycle of circulation, which is having, giving, and receiving. And receiving was the hardest part for, well, almost the hardest part for many of us, some having was, but it's an important part, because if we are not willing to say yes, if we are not willing to receive, we are stopping the flow. So how willing are you to receive the gifts that the universe is sending your way? There's a few ways that you can gauge that. If someone offers you a compliment, do you say something like, oh, this whole thing? Or if somebody offers you to hold the door for you, do you say, oh no, let me get that for you? Do you return it back on them? You reflect it. Then you're not saying yes. You're not opening your heart to receiving the gifts. The universe through the other person is trying to get that flow moving through you and you're telling it, no, thank you. I, this door is closed right now. Well, let's open the door. Let's open whatever is closed that's keeping that flow from moving through our lives. And then there's the gifts that each and every day offer you. Now, this may sound like a cliche, but are you stopping to smell the roses? Do you stop and appreciate the clouds in the sky? Do you say thank you when you put the key in your car? There are so many things to be 
grateful for, to be mindful about in our day that are gifts that the universe is sending to you. When somebody smiles and looks your way, do you just smile back and feel that joy of the moment? Or do you do, I wonder what they want? Does that thought go through your mind? I wonder what they've been up to. One is saying no to the flow of love and joy, to the universe moving. And one is saying, yes, I see you in this moment and no God, no love, no joy, because I behold the Christ in you. If we want to thrive in this human experience, we must be willing to be the spiritual beings that we are here to be and see God in everything and everywhere. In the book that I just mentioned to you, written by Derek Rydell, he says this, in order to truly receive the gift from everything and everyone around us, we need to slow down and cultivate a life of contemplation and deeper observation. We need to expand our vision to the point that the seeming mundane in our life become the sacred, to where everything is holy, because everything is an expression of God. So why not recognize it? Why not open up and let God move in our lives to truly know our true parentage as spiritual beings, having a human experience, expressing God in this world? Numerous times you've heard the passage from Marion Williamson, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. And because of that fear, we put ourselves in boxes with labels. We put our vision in boxes that are constrained and limited. And we're, we show an unwillingness to step out of that box, to express love, to be in the um, uncomfortable zone of living in the unknowing in our lives. And that's where God is. That's where the new possibilities are. That's where the edge of our growth is. I've said this before, our playing small does not bless the world. It does not serve us in this lifetime. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking our energy for whatever reason, for whatever reason, to make other people not feel insecure around us. We shrink our energy for so many reasons. And what if we were willing to change that? I do think it's time. It's time for us to get rid of any guilt, any energy that might be holding us to these smaller possibilities. We are all meant to shine. And I got to tell you, who gets that most is our children. Well, be ye like little children. Let us mod let our children model for us how to be in the world. Because we were born to make manifest the glory of God. We knew that at one point in time. And yet we have forgotten. For whatever reasons, it's time to remember. It's time to remove whatever it is that is keeping us from thriving in the world. So let's talk a little bit more about what it means to have an expansive vision. To expand, we have to be willing to see past any limiting thoughts, any limiting beliefs. Anytime we say, I don't or I can't, we have to be willing to stop and say, what if I said yes? What if? Just be willing. And from that willingness, a new possibility can be born, can be birthed. Um, I experienced that this past week. We were recording for our Shine Our Light service. I had originally felt a call 
as soon as we talked about that service, I'd felt a call to share a monologue um, from a story in scripture, and I talked myself out of it. I was like, oh, I'm too busy. I can't do that, blah, 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 blah. And I did not offer to be part of it. And as we were recording, that voice got really loud, and I suddenly went, oh my, I am being invited to expand my vision, and here I am saying no. Well, if you watched it, you realize I changed my mind. We can change our mind and say yes, and the universe will open the possibilities, will allow us to step beyond that comfort zone. And when we do that, we are claiming joy. We are claiming love. We are claiming our place here in this puzzle of humanity. We are focusing on creation. And it is through creation that the divine activity of God works perpetually in our lives. The world is constantly in motion, is constantly in creation. And we are always a part of that process. So when we are focused on negative thinking, we are creating that which we don't want to create. How will our bodies heal if what we are focused on is illness? How will our lives change into abundance if what we are focusing on is lack? We must change our focus. We must become aware of more expansive feelings. When somebody criticizes you, do you take that on and constrain yourself? Do you say, yes, that's me? Or do you look at it as, well, is this something I want to look at and change? Is this really mine to take on in my life and do differently? You have the choice. What are you saying yes to? And I invite you to say yes to your highest good, to say yes to expanding your life and not constraining your life. The last time I remember speaking about expansive visioning was my last Sunday at Unity Minneapolis before I came here to Unity of Salem. And at that time, I spoke about a tire issue that had been gone on, going on with my car for some time in that the low tire light kept flashing. And every time I checked the tires, they were fine. But then that light would come back on and it would stay on. And I checked the tires again and I went through this a number of times. And I realized I could choose differently, that if I started ignoring that, which is what I was doing, I could find myself abandoned on the side of the road someday, or I could actually choose to take the car to a technician who might know something about what was going on. And so that's what I did. And he messed with it for a short period of time, charged me nothing, and the light went off. Now, no, I was getting ready to drive across country to move here to Salem. And my limiting thoughts almost kept me from having that new possibility where I could feel the comfort in knowing that if I needed a tire to be replaced or fixed, my car would tell me instead of assuming that everything was fine when the car was trying to tell me something. Well, guess what has happened again? Three years later, this past week, that light came on. I took it to Les Schwab. They checked the tires. The tires were fine. The light went off. I drove away. The light came on. Took it to Les Schwab. They checked it again. The light went off. And it came back on. Now, they have since hooked up some equipment to it, and it's working great. But what this did for me was truly put a foundation under what it means to have an expansive vision. Because the, our vision, what we are holding in our mind, is where the rubber meets the road. It's what is holding us and moving us forward, just like the tires are moving the car forward. It is through our visioning that we get where we want to go. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a fun road trip. I am ready to move into a life of new possibilities. 
to step out of my comfort zone and play big in the world. That's what we are here to do. And so let's explore that energy of visioning and, and do so through a time of meditation. I'm going to invite Angela up to play some music to help us move within, to get comfortable in our bodies in this moment. And, and what might help is to close your eyes. And as the music begins to take a few deep breaths, allow yourself to move into a time of conscious communion with God. As you focus on your breathing, check your body for any tension. And as you release your breath, let go. Allow your body to relax. Allow the chair that you are sitting in to fully support you as you surrender to the flow of spirit. With your next breath, carry into your heart space these words. I am. Breathe it in and breathe it out. And in this sacred place, I invite you to allow these words to be the words of your heart. I let go of any cares and concerns, knowing that right now in this moment, I am centered in spirit. I am open and receptive to the highest good in every area of my life. I move forward with an open mind and an open heart, knowing that I am divinely guided every step of my journey. As I align my thoughts with the deepest desires of my heart, I joyfully see the vision the new possibilities birth forth around me as I say yes, as I listen in a time of silent prayer. And as we now bring our attention back to our surroundings, our hearts are full, full of love, full of joy, full of God. And as we bring this sacred time to a close, we are centered in that flow of divine love moving through us out into our lives, creating an expanded vision of peace, of love, of joy, of oneness throughout this planet, throughout this universe. For we know with God all things are possible. And we say yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen.
Now is the time in our service where we take a moment to practice the spiritual practice of gratitude, of being grateful for the gifts that come into this community through the mail, through our website, through the hands of those who choose to be of service here in this community. We are so blessed and we are truly grateful as we bless these gifts with the words of our offertory blessing. Divine love, flowing in through and as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. We would also like to include in this time of prayer those who have sent their names into us or sent the names of their dear ones, and you will find them in this prayer box that's right here in front of me. I invite you to use the power of your imagination, your visioning, and mentally add to the names in this box those who you might be holding in your heart as we take a moment to truly vision them on the other side of whatever is going on in their lives. Shall we join together in prayer? Mother, Father, God, we know that wherever we are, God is, that you are truly active in the lives of each of those who we hold in our hearts right now. Names we've spoken out loud, the names that are written down, the names that are in the silence of our heart. That you are at work guiding each and every one of them in their every thought, word, and action providing whatever is needed to bring forth unlimited blessings. And that in this moment, there is more than enough to bless this planet. We envision peace. We envision oneness. We envision wholeness. And we give thanks in advance for answered prayer as we pray this in the name and through the nature of the living, loving Christ presence. Amen. close our service, knowing from that place of the one presence, the one power, our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And we are truly blessed, always. Namaste.